Welcome to the Conservation Games. It's another session we've got, of course, with uh, our wonderful coaches that have given off time to come and educate the players on uh, conservation in Africa. We are having a wonderful time. And today we have got Team Lion, of course, captained by Hilton Mudariki. Hilton, good to see you. I can see you've got your troops ready to go. How's it, Tino? Yeah, um, exciting to be here. Uh, looking forward to, uh, to the session. Mark, thank you so much for, for giving up your time and uh, coming to educate us. We're really looking forward to, uh, to learning more from you. Um, you know, during the past, the past couple of days, um, you've been educating us and we're looking to uh, learn a bit more about that. Um, also want to give a shout out to Ray Price on his birthday. Happy birthday, Reza. I hope you have a great day. And I also want to welcome Tracy, who's new to our team. Tracy, welcome to the Lions. Thanks, Tino. Thanks a lot, Hilton. Raise a happy birthday. I'll behave myself and not ask how many you are today. But, uh, of <laughs> course, we hope that you have a wonderful day. Hilton, I've just been taking a look at uh, the leaderboard. You must be pretty proud. We're in the last uh, little stretch here, the home straight, and you guys are firmly in the lead. Yes, very, very happy. I actually just got the, the text now to, uh, to, show us, uh, to show the leaderboard, and I'm very, very happy with what the guys have done so far. All right, guys. Really, really good. Let's look forward to uh, an exciting captain's run today. Mark, good to have you on with us once again. Thank you very much for uh, giving off of your time. Today, we are talking about conservation education in Africa. I'll give you just a moment to introduce the topic before we get into the nitty gritties. Thanks so much, uh, Gino, and good day again to, to the Lions team. Uh, I have to say, it's, it's awesome seeing and interacting with uh, a great bunch of people, but uh, equally a great bunch of sports men and women. I have seen either in the flesh or on TV, all of you in your, in your chosen pursuits, and I salute you all. It's fantastic. Um, well done on that, and it's great to share uh, some of our learnings in the conservation space with you. Um, but it's been great interacting with everybody, Tina, and yeah, thanks, I look forward to it. Uh, conservation education may not seem the most sexy topic in, in, in the broader conservation uh, concept, um, but for us it's a hell of an important and for many of our colleagues around Africa and, and the world. Um, I'm just going to give you a broad brushstroke of, of what conservation education means to us, but in, in discussion with Tina earlier, he asked me to just uh, mention what, what's important to us in the broader conservation context. And basically, as we know, it, conservation involves the wise use of, of many resources, be it uh, at landscape level, be it at biodiversity level, uh, be it discussing the broad context of sustainable living. Um, we all know that rainforests are decreasing, uh, temperatures are rising. All of that uh, encompasses uh, conservation at some touch point. Um, and that's why it makes it such a diverse and interesting and sometimes divisive topic. Um, but it's at, at the end of the day, it's about managing our world uh, to the best of our abilities for future generations. That's, that's how we look at it. Um, and how do we broadcast that to, you know, to broader society, those who don't have, uh, you know, haven't been engaged or, or educated uh, on the intricacies of, of conservation? A lot of it is through, through what they call charismatic species. Um, and I know you've probably discussed with, with the other teams, um, other coaches, and i just shout out to the other coaches as well. I, I've, I've gleaned a lot from them. They're great people and, and great professionals. Um, but the charismatic species uh, is around uh, species like lion, elephant, etc. And there's a lot of nuance around that, but they are popular in the world. Uh, not limited to those two species, but that, that's another whole uh, topic. So in terms of conservation education, um, we feel it's important to, to pass the baton, as it were, to future generations and also to those people that haven't had the, the opportunities that we have uh, in this space. And there are many, many models of, of, of successful uh, conservation education uh, companies or, or entities. You've got South African Wildlife College in South Africa. You've got the Painted Dog Institute in near Wangi. You've got uh, Riley Travers doing great work in Amiri. So we're just one of a number of, of, of hopefully committed and meaningful education entities. Um, but how do you pass that baton on? Well, what we have seen uh, to be successful is split it into 
a number of aspects, uh, and those being starting at primary level, at impressional level, primary uh, uh, school, uh, and then secondary, and then tertiary, uh, moving into some form of cultural understanding, uh, education on sustainability, et cetera, uh, into, into research. But let's start on the, the primary side, primary schools. We've chosen our model to be a grade six model. We've got uh, 11 schools from our, our community, government schools around our property. And Tina, I'll put some, some visuals up a little bit later. Um, but we, we bring those kids into a camp that we have on the property. Uh, and we find it's also all about the teacher because a lot of these kids, most of these kids haven't ventured into the conservation space to any extent. Um, so we, we try and start at a grassroots understandable level and also, as I mentioned, an impressionable level because I don't know about you folks, but uh, I find when I was sort of 19, 11 uh, and people spoke to me about conservation and spoke to me about the, the, the basics, um, I wasn't at the stage where I was thinking about girls or other things. So it was, you know, those kind of things stuck. Um, so we go through in our, in our, in our three-day course, we go through a lot of classroom learnings and then a lot of practical uh, based stuff. We go through population dynamics. We go through water cycles, carbon cycles. Um, again, understanding the level of, of, of ability to, to absorb all the stuff. So we pitch it at, at that level. We've got some wonderful people on the property here who are, are employees, they're scouts, they, are, they, they work in our outreach programs, but they also, we utilize their skills as dedicated um, teachers. And they've been through uh, you know, ministry, ministry sessions uh, to try and capture uh, the fundamentals of a classroom session. We, all of our projects, our programs are endorsed by ministry, Ministry of Education and others, and we work very closely uh, with the district schools inspector. In fact, it's, it's fundamental and it's, it's, it's legislation that to bring these kids in, we have to bring in one of the teachers of, of each school, which is great. They learn a lot, but they also help us uh, keep the kids in line and keep them focused. Um, but obviously we go through the, the, the life cycles of, of birds, mammals, insects. At the end of the course uh, for, the, for the junior school kids, we get them to, to put on their own little productions, their own plays and skits before they get their certificates uh, to understand what they've learned. And it, it, it's, I have to tell you, it's, it's amazing um, when I can, I do, I do uh, attend the last session where they share with us without being prompted or no choreography, what they've learned. Um, and their the ability to absorb is, is, is amazing. They'll tell us about, you know, the, the, the scientific names of, of an elephant and, and they'll tell us why uh, conservation is important, why rhino conservation is important. They'll, they'll tell us why uh, tourism has a huge role in conservation. Um, so we like to leave it to them and then we, we, we kind of judge them on the, the effectiveness of their little groups. We, we normally split them up into six groups of four to five, and we give them a prize, whoever puts on the best play. And like I said, it's amazing um, the uptake of the information that is disseminated to them. We also go through a, a cultural um, education with them in terms of embracing local culture. In our part of the world, the, the, the predominant uh, 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 culture is Shanghai around us. And uh, we have a, on our doorstep, we have a, a, a living museum which we spend a full afternoon at, where, which showcases traditional uh, cultural methods. Um, and they, the, the kids, it's nice for them to understand um, what culture means as well, uh, from a broad context. We also bring in recycling and sustainability uh, into their lives. Uh, and they have, all these 11 schools have formed sustainability clubs in, back in their schools. And we go into the schools subsequently and, and test them and, and, and see what has stuck in terms of their knowledge and, and, and in terms of the activities that speak to conservation in, in, in those schools. Um, our secondary education thrust is, uh, I've mentioned briefly during the week, folks, of our, our Cadet Ranger program. And uh, this embraces a, a life skills aspect as well as a conservation aspect, but it also focuses on becoming a ranger, the ability to become a ranger and the fundamentals required, the skill sets required and the grounding required to become an effective ranger. And why we do that is we, we feel that these, a lot of these kids in these, in these schools um, 
don't have an understanding or, or an appreciation of other vocations around them in our, in our area or in other areas of Zimbabwe. So rather than lose them to other countries, because we, we sit very close to Mozambique and, and South Africa um, in our geographic location, we try and educate them in saying, guys, there, there is an opportunity and there is a vocation in conservation. And um, because we have a, a, a rhino story to tell, we, we, we focus a lot on, on, on security, anti-poaching, on tracking, um, on first aid in the field, uh, on identification, uh, and, and things like that. And it's, it's, an, it's a 77 day course in the school holidays. Obviously we get endorsement from the headmasters of each school, the head teacher and the teachers themselves. Um, and it's amazing to see these kids progressing from, you know, folks that, that don't necessarily, uh, haven't been through our junior school programs to, to understanding and embracing what it, what it takes, first of all, in terms of fitness, skills, focus, et cetera, um, and commitment. But the skill sets displayed by these kids is, 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 is so heartwarming. You've got to be here to see their sort of graduations and things like that and what they have learned. Within that, they learn a lot of discipline. You know, they, they, they learn how to cook. We've got a, a, a young chef that teaches them how to cook. Uh, they cook for each other. They, they, they clean their, their barracks, their dormitories. So there's a, quite a broad aspect to it. Um, and while they don't come out with a formal qualification, they come out with a bucket load of, of experience in that, over that year in terms of what we feel, in our humble opinion, is important in the conservation space and how they can add value as they get older. Um, going on from secondary, secondary uh, interventions at secondary school, tertiaries, we, we're fortunate uh, in, our, in our world down here to be able to sponsor uh, certain students in specific research projects. Uh, we've got a young man right at the moment, I think I mentioned during the week, who's doing his PhD on leopards and Alan started with us as a, as a, as a builder's assistant. And we feel he could become one of the foremost even decision makers in conservation in our country, a wonderful human being who we feel is so deserving of, of these opportunities. And he's now teaching us stuff and he's, 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 he's bringing stuff to us that, that is, is really valuable in our daily, our daily interventions in, in our conservation work. So we feel a kind of a responsibility to be able to, to, to share our learnings with, with these folks. We have produced uh, 51, uh, published 51 papers in conservation to date. Uh, through our education and research departments. And uh, we have been able to, to assist with funding and mentorship of about 23 uh, uh, postgraduate, uh, whether it's masters or PhDs. Um, and that, that's again, I think a factor in conservation education that we are fortunate to be able to, to, to share with those, those folks that we, we come across and, and we managed to bring into our property. But at the same time, ladies and gents, it's important to say this is, this is a small part of what, what uh, we're able to do. There are many, many, many other huge value adds in terms of Zimbabwe and South Africa and Mozambique and Botswana and nabbing countries, uh, NGOs or entities or private organizations that work with government to try and bring education to a broader, broader set of, of folks um, and to upskill them and to equip them with decision-making ability uh, going forward before they decide what to do. And we're trying to capture that, that imagination and capture that passion in them. Um, and we feel that as, as a kind of a responsibility along with many, many of our other learned colleagues in this space. I think you've touched a lot on um, the education that you provide and it's several institutions that provide that. Um, my question is maybe, how difficult is it to be rolling out that education to people? Because it's different to school, isn't it? Where everybody more or less needs an education and they'll do as much as they can to ensure that their children get that education. This is something that people don't have to do. How difficult is it getting people to actually come on and roll and, and be schooled in, in conservation? In our context here, you know, it's quite easy because we, we have a great relationship with the, the schools themselves and the governing bodies of the schools. And we, the way we kind of sell it, as it were, is all we're trying to do is add to the curriculum that's already there in, in conservation in schools. Uh, so it's, it's pretty easy to get them in. I, I think we, it also creates a lot of fun and, 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 and a difference from being in a classroom, in a school classroom. We do, you know, we do take them out in the field. There is a lot of fun. So it's not difficult to bring those folks in. Um, we, do, we do have a, a, a 
scenario where we do bring in private schools uh, to, to share what we share our knowledge. But that's also, that, that's on a voluntary basis. But uh, to answer your question directly, it's not difficult to get these folks in and the appetite to learn is very encouraging. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, Mark, just so exciting that you could, I mean, you could be training one of the future leaders at uh, national parks, a place that we all think is a little bit probably understaffed um, and also probably underappreciated for a lot of the things that they do in this country. Um, so, hey, so exciting that, that you could be dealing with a lot of people like that that will hopefully take over for, for future generations. Yeah, Reza, thanks, man. We, we, we do uh, naturally deal a lot with national parks or the National Parks Authority. Um, and there are a lot of good people who have their, their, their challenges, their resource challenges, like all of us. But there are a lot of good people there. And uh, the, just talking about education, the uh, Mushandike College uh, is, I think, getting stronger and stronger. And there's a good, there's a good commitment from national parks to, to upskill the folks there and to increase the resources to, to, to broaden that knowledge. But we would be delighted if one of the people that, that, that goes through our systems uh, you know, enters into national parks because that's the ultimate, ultimate objective. Awesome, man. Well done, Mark, man. Mark, how's it, man? Uh, nice to see you, uh, or, albeit uh, over computers. But um, firstly, well done on your whole operation, and you've been going for years, and you're very experienced. Um, my, my question is, um, you've got the 11 schools there from an educational point of view. Um, do you kind of offer um, smaller groups from, say, Bulawa, Harare, um, you know, if we were to bring sort of eight kids or 12 kids just for education for two, three days, you offer those kind of packages or, I mean, I know it takes accommodation and all sorts, um, but, you know, show them around, uh, especially the museums and that kind of thing, or is it, is it purely around your, your area and within your area? Gee, yeah, good to see you again, man, and good question. Thanks. A, a lot of people do ask us that. We, we, do, we do offer a, a, a schools-based um, education program here at Hakamela Camp, which is, which is our, our specific education camp. And th those are on a, on a voluntary and a requested basis. And uh, so, so it's not specifically to those 11 schools. We'd love it to be more, more schools. We haven't done specific groups. We've done a couple of, for example, we've had a couple of hockey, you know, hockey um, camps because we've got some nice hockey fields next door to us, where we combine that with a little bit of conservation education. Um, but what we have found, Stu, is um, outside of things like COVID-19, which intervene, uh, our, our program, our, our calendar for, for that camp is really, really full. We'd love to do more, and we, we're not saying no to that, because the more people, the better, the more groups, the better. So we will, and do look into that, Stu, but we haven't got a, a formal course for something like that right now. But very happy to consider that, uh, notwithstanding the, 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 the full calendar that we currently have. Um, I just was interested on, on the funding. I know you talk about uh, NGOs, and obviously you've, you've probably got private funding as well. Does, does the government at all contribute in any way, uh, financially, or, uh, or is it just through kind of support structures? Stu, no, the government doesn't financially contribute to, to our, our cause, um, and we don't expect them to. Uh, most of our funding is through, through donor support. Uh, also, we've got a, we've got a, a tourism uh, project on the property, a high-end tourism uh, entity, and we, the ultimate goal as well is to show that the tourism receipts, tourism profits can go straight back into conservation. Um, unfortunately, that's on hold at this time. Yeah. But we do we do rely uh, exclusively at the moment in, during these times on on value donations. Okay, a very quick question. <laughs> Sorry, uh, how much how many staff do you have on at Malangwe? Two four hundred and twenty. We've got four hundred and twenty okay. staff uh, split between four departments: uh, security, tourism, administration, and ranch workshops, maintenance, etc. Wow. Okay, that's me. Thanks, Mark. I wanted to say, I've been watching the Malalangwe video that you sent, which was just outstanding. But what strikes me in all of this is that we have so few women role models. Um, you know, uh, I saw the black mambas who are in, involved in the anti-poaching, the lionesses. Um, but why is it that there are so few women 
involved in, in conservation. Um, I'm guessing for a security point of view, you know, it's, it's, it's semi-dangerous. Uh, that was my first question. The other one is, um, as far as I'm concerned, the education begins in the home. So why can't we go do like deep dives into the community go into the homes again where the mothers are with the children at a very young age and start educating right from there. Okay, Tracy, thanks very much. Those are questions that are, that are quite often asked and, and very pertinent. Um, obviously, we as, a, as an organization are extremely gender, gender sensitive um, and not selective in any way. In fact, we, we host a program as well every year. In fact, it's, it's two sessions a year now as of this year called the Girl Child Empowerment Forum, um, where we bring in specifically girls from a lot of these schools and others. Um, and we bring in captains of industry from various walks of life to, to, to share and to uplift them in terms of value in society, et cetera. Um, specifically to our you know, anti-poaching aspects, we were actually discussing this again yesterday around the topic that you raised. And we do feel that there are certain uh, roles where women can do better than men in, in you know, uh, be it data capture or interpretation and things like that. But we don't have a specific exclusion, uh, uh, if you will, on, on any, any gender in, in terms of our protection mechanisms uh, or our other programs. I don't know how else, do you want to ask another question on that specific one? No, I, I don't. I'm just, I'm just trying to think outside the box and, and, and find out why, why it's not appealing to us. I, I, since I've, I've only been in this group for a week and I'm having the best time. So I guess my question is, what can I do more to inspire women to want to do this? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's role models like you, Tracy. Um, and I really enjoyed seeing your enthusiasm on the group this week. It's role models like you that, that can sort of take the lead. And I think that's what it's all about. It's, a, it's about being an advocate for it. And, and, and there's, yeah, in our view, there's no limitation to what anyone can do, really. Um, that's my, my, our stance on that. And then your second question, I think, pertained to, you know, it starts in the home. And you're absolutely right. In fact, we, we've had some of the parents of, of the kids that we have been working with saying, you know, what are you, what are you telling our kids? You know, we... What about, what's the thing about plastic and single-use plastic and things like that? So you're right, it's, it's, a, it's another education uh, aspect that we, we could do. We don't have outreach within the, within the villages themselves and the homes themselves, um, but it's definitely there's space for that, for, for those outreach programs within villages, etc. And I think, it would, I, I think it's another low-hanging fruit uh, for, for the future. You're absolutely right, because it does start there. Thank you. Mark, um, just out of curiosity, I just wanted to find out how long does it take to actually train or, or educate a ranger before he's allowed to go out into the field? So, Craig, yeah, good question. Um, in, our, in our model, we, when we do a, a selection course where we need new rangers for whatever reason, uh, we bring in the last intake was that we, we, we required, I think, 20, we were taking on 22 people. We require, we, we took in 200 uh, potential folks and obviously it went through a six month program. And in that, during that six months, obviously people dropped off or, or, or we said to keep people, you're not going to cut, you know, you're not going to cut it. Um, but six months allowed us to, 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 to select 22 people um, and, and bring them into our, our fold. But then they spend a lot of time as well with our senior teams, our senior sergeants and that to learn a bit more in terms of the specifics. So, so six to eight months, Craig, is, is the norm for us. It does vary. It, it can vary in terms of the need and in terms of the type of position that we're looking for. But that's just an example of our most recent uh, selection course and recruitment course. Excellent. Thanks very much. Mark, you don't want, you don't want Sean but, or Slug, by the way. Make, <laughs> make a decent poacher. <laughs> well, if he if he if he poaches like he bats, he's got a big problem. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Mark. I just wanted to um to find out. You mentioned the different stages, so from uh, like junior school to high school. 
Um, do you find that the numbers increase or decrease, especially during that uh, junior school to high school in terms of interest? Um, Hilton, it's, it's, we, don't, we don't see a, a, a different level of interest. We, we, pitch, you know, we pitch it to, to the level of education or the level of what we feel can be absorbed by the different age groups. So, yeah, we, 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 we don't, you know, every now and again, you get someone that really is, is needs to sit in the corner, you know. <laughs> but uh, the level of interest is, is amazing. It actually surpasses what we expect. It's, I would come and just sit. In, in one of the sessions. They are quite captivated, but it, like I said in the beginning, Hilton, it's, it's also all about the content of what, you, what you're trying to teach. And it's yeah. about the ability of the teacher to engage at the level of the, the students. And, yeah. and I think we've got those two things possibly right. And therefore the, 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 the concentration levels or the attention levels are, they remain there, yeah. And also we, we do, I have to say, we do bring in a, a certain amount of discipline. Yeah. You know, we expect, a certain level of, of, of participation from these kids, otherwise it's not worth doing. Mm. Awesome, thanks Mark. Sorry, my computer froze there. Um, ironically, Torch stole both my questions, um, <laughs> but I just want to say thanks, thanks Mark for uh, everything. I just, yeah, loved all, you know, I'm just learning every day from, from everything, you know, all the coaches are posting and, and everything, it's been such uh, such a great ride and great journey but um you know that was yeah one thing that I think you know my kids are just so they love the the wildlife and, and bugs and, and all, all of that type of thing and one thing we, we want to do is is you know you're in such a beautiful part of the world there um when we come out we'd love to yeah if you know have them join in something like that and you know bring a whole group with us and um but no I just just wanted to say thank you it's, it's amazing no, thanks, Cara. Yeah, we, we, we do count ourselves very privileged to be able to share share what we've learned and what 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 our experience has, has given us. Um, and it would be great to see any and all of you down here. Um, it really would, because the more you know, the more better, the more the better, the more that are exposed to these things, the better. And and again, there's so many, as you know, there's so many places in Zim that can offer so much in, in the conservation space. How's it, Mark? Um, I just want to say. Uh, I came out to Malalangri when I was about 17, 18, and it was a really awesome experience because I came with um, Tom Ball, um, and we we came out and we did like a team building thing, and we had the rangers and stuff join us, um, and we like every morning we wake up at like half five. And we'd go for a run and all the rangers and stuff like that would, would sing chants. And um, it got to a stage where I think we, after like three, four kilometers, they said, all right, now we're just going to go. We're just going to race off and finish like whatever the 5K kind of race that it was. And the rangers absolutely dusted us. Like we had absolutely no chance trying to keep up with those guys. Um, and we then went on to do like a game drive and stuff like that. And it was just really awesome to see, you know, firsthand the stuff that you guys are doing and you know what's going on behind the scenes and stuff like that so i just want to say a big thank you for everything you guys are doing no thanks very much ryan and and yeah uh, tom's dad is absolutely instrumental in what you see there um we our, our guys are very very well mentored very well trained and yeah we're a big family here but um i'm glad you i'm glad you enjoyed it really glad yeah, just a quick thanks very much indeed um, to all of you for getting on here. Mark, thanks very much. Uh, it's been massively appreciated, your time and effort that you've been putting into this thing and, and, and the weight you've put behind it with your knowledge and conservation and obviously the, the, the huge, impressive um, work that you're doing down there in, in, in Malilangwe. Um, also, a big thanks to Hilton and, and the Lions team uh, for participating. Uh, on this call so enthusiastically for the last three weeks and we, we've got one more call uh, next week and um, big happy birthday to Reza and a big thanks to Cara for joining us from the other side of the of Australia and, and in particular also shout out again to Cara and Tracy um, you know uh, it's particularly nice to have ladies on this call and um, yeah just um, thank you very much guys um, and I think what you said, Tracy, is a, is a nice way to end it off. You know, um, it, it starts at home, and uh, these little two, these two little ones are are learning um, massively from from their mum. 
uh, about conservation and um, they, they're loving it. Hey guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Tino, for everything that you've done. All right. No worries. No worries. Thanks a lot, uh, Luke, for your final contributions. I think the thank yous have been said, but once again, Mark, thanks a lot for uh, your wealth of knowledge in conservation and passing it on to, of course, the team members and the viewers. Um, we look forward to, of course, another captain's run with you with a different team next week. But uh, to Team Lions, I must say, I take off my hat to you. I think your contributions, I think the energy you've uh, brought to the games has been brilliant. Um, don't think that I don't care and uh, understand what you guys say about me on your groups. Everybody lets me know. <laughs> so if I haven't done your game yet, good luck when I do. But otherwise, guys, thanks a lot. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. The viewers, I'm sure you have too. And uh, we look forward to another captain's run sometime soon. Other than, other than that, guys, take care and we'll uh, see you soon. Our wildlife needs help. Tourism to Africa is at an all-time low. You can assist by liking and sharing the conservation games. You can contribute financially by hitting the donate button on the Zambezia.com website. Let's get together and back up the Frontline Conservation Team.